The ancient Greek antikythera mechanism is the oldest known example of an analog computer and was used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses decades in advance. It has fascinated scientists and archaeologists alike for more than 120 years. No machine of such sheer complexity was made by mankind until medieval cathedral clocks more than millennium later. It is currently thought to have been made around 100 BC, 2,123 years ago, having had the first known set of scientific dials or scales, incredibly precise and interlocked gears, and even shows when the Olympics were going to take place at the time. It is also the only known surviving artifact of a long tradition of ancient Greek astronomical displays, which formed the basis of European clockmaking techniques. But how does this mechanism even work? Why was it made? And how was it even discovered in the first place? In October 1900, a group of sponge divers discovered a wreck of a trade ship near the Greek island of Antikythera by accident. A bit of bad weather had actually caused them to stop at the island and pause all of their current assignments. Then they went diving, suddenly retrieving a great deal of artefacts, including bronze, marble statues, glassware, jewellery, coins and a very odd mechanism. Little did they actually know that they were about to change our understanding of ancient technology forever. The divers, excited by the bronze, arranged to meet with the Minister of Education in Greece, who was in charge of archaeology at the time, before the artefacts were brought to their current home, the National Museum of Archaeology in Greece. Greek archaeologist Valerios Stays, together with the Minister of Education Spiridon Stays, found that one of the pieces of the mechanism had some sort of gear wheel embedded into it. They likely immediately thought of an astronomical clock. After Spiridon Stays lost his position in government, Valerius Stays continued studying Antikythera for three more years. Through his research, he dated the wreck to the middle of the 1st century BC, which is not far off for his time, presented the theory that the ship was travelling from Asia Minor to Rome when it sank, and he discussed the possibility that it was a maritime navigation instrument. All of these theories have been supported by subsequent, more modern researchers. However, after Stay's findings, there are no more investigations on the device for a very long time. It took nearly 50 years for British physicist, historian and scientist, Derek Joseph de Sola Price, to bring the mechanism back into interest again in 1951. Price first went to Cambridge to study history of science for a second degree, devoting this period of time to research medieval astronomical instruments. He obtained permission and funding from the American Philosophical Society to go to Athens after reading much about the mechanism. Along with Greek nuclear physicist Charalampos Karakalos, Price took X ray and gamma ray images. It was, according to Price, like opening a pyramid and finding an atomic bomb. His research would eventually go on to become the lead article in the June 1959 edition of Scientific American. He was also the first person to fully describe all the gears. Since 2005, the identified remains of the Antikythera mechanism have comprised 82 fragments, 7 major pieces A to G, and 75 minor fragments 1 to 75. The major pieces contain mechanical components parts of display dials or inscribed metal plates. For instance, fragment A shows features of bearings, pillars and a block, while D features a disc, a 63 tooth gear and a plate. Most of the smaller fragments have been found to contain nothing useful, but a few 
do have inscriptions. It is, therefore, strongly suggestive of an ancient Greek tradition of complex mechanical technology, which influenced European clockmaking technologies heavily via the Arabic clock. The device was found to have originated near the city of Syracuse, which is Archimedes' homeland, suggesting that Archimedes might have actually invented the precursor to the antikythera mechanism. The historian Cicero actually even wrote of similar devices being made by Archimedes in the 3rd century BC. But how did the mechanism actually function, and why was it made by Archimedes in the first place? At its core was a sophisticated arrangement of bronze gears. These gears could have calculated relative positions of the sun and moon, lunar phases, eclipses, and many calendar cycles, possibly even the known planets. The gears are enclosed in a box with a hand crank used to operate the mechanism, and pointers, as shown, displaying the positions of the sun and moon. Turning the crank causes the sun and the moon pointers to move. This hand crank moves the day pointer about 78 days per full rotation of the crank, finding one particular day would be easily possible if the mechanism were in perfect working order, like before. The action of moving the crank would have actually caused all interlocked gears within the mechanism to rotate. The positions of the sun and the moon the moon phase, eclipses, and calendar cycles would amazingly all be calculated simultaneously. Additionally, as well as these pointers and the sphere, there are two concentric dials. One displaying the tropical zodiac and the other displaying the current stage in the Egyptian calendar. Inside the mechanism, the 48 tooth crown gear is connected to the crank handle. It meshes with a larger, horizontal, 224 tooth gear. This gear completes one revolution per simulated year. This gear is also connected to the central pillar, which changes the position of the sun pointer. But how was the position of the moon calculated? The Greeks knew that the moon moved slower at apoapsis, the highest point in the orbit, and faster as periapsis, the lowest point in the orbit. Our modern understanding of the moon's slightly eccentric orbit matches this. However, the Greeks had to compensate for this, likely they did not know about this type of orbit. Therefore, they used two gears to illustrate an epicycle. This was the Greek way of explaining the variations in speed and direction of the moon. The idea of an epicycle was likely first proposed by Apollonius of Perga around 220 years before the mechanism was constructed. However, the arrangement of the gears that created the epicycle 
very closely matches Kepler's second law of planetary motion. Kepler was born in the 16th century. It is incredibly astonishing that the Greeks had very similar ideas to him in the 1st century BC. The mechanism can also predict eclipses of the Sun and Moon using the solar cycle, successive eclipses using the ex oligomos cycle and more. Both of these calendar cycles and more are displayed by means of pointers on the rear face. Another feature of the Andrikeithan mechanism is that it can calculate dates for the Olympic Games every four years, the Nemean Games, which happens the year before and after the Olympics, and many other Greek Panhellenic Games. The back door of the mechanism appears to be the instruction manual. On one fragment there are inscriptions of 76 years, 19 years, representing the Calypic and Tonic calendar cycles, and 223 for the aforementioned Zarvo cycle as well. There are many more inscriptions on how to operate the mechanism, and these are only some important ones. The Antikythera mechanism is an ancient, mind-blowing, technological, astronomical display which showed the calendar cycles, the moon phase, positions of the sun and moon, and probably a lot more. It did take a very, very long time for scientists and archaeologists alike to actually spark their interests in this amazing mechanism, but when they did, it completely and utterly changed their understanding of ancient Greek technology forever. <laughs>